is a passionate plea for the sake of others. Because it seems when I pled for myself from the depths of my soul, as I was reaching out and up from the abyss of my life that was dragging me down, it felt as if no one could hear my silent screams for help. Screams so loud and panicked it tore my vocal cords into splinters and wretched my throat until the pain felt like sandpaper against a cement wall, only no one could hear it. Until one day, as I was about to give up, give in, and claim that I was defeated, I was saved. And my savior didn't just happen by one day as I continued my rants and ravings, as I cursed and clawed, as drool drizzled down my chin, as my eyes were dry, parched of moisture, no longer shedding tears, but felt like steel pads, as I blinked away the day and cowered from the night. No, my savior was there the entire time. On those days when I knew that I was going to have to make some one more devastating decision, but it's going to be the last, I swear, I won't have to do this again decision. My Savior was right there. And when I was tearing to shreds the last vestiges of hope that I had because there wasn't enough nickels or dimes or pesos coming my way and I just was going down that dark and dismal tunnel because I didn't care if there was a light at the end. And just when I was signing off and saying my goodbyes, I was through yelling and fighting, debating, procrastinating, and participating. There he was. And I said, I wasn't going to plead anymore. I knew what I'd done. I wasn't proud of it. And if I had to do it again, well, I'd just have to cross that bridge, wouldn't I? But I know in the back of my mind, I was still crying out for help. I was still hoping on hope that help would come. And even though I'd committed myself to the inevitable, I'd set myself on a course of no return. But he was right there, all along. He was actually waiting for me to stop all the screaming, yelling, and confusion I was putting myself through. And when that happened, there he was. His hand was out, and his arms were around me, and I was gathered into them like a baby. And I cried the cringing cry of a lost soul who just wanted somebody to listen. I realized that had I not stopped and taken stock of myself, my life, my present, what I was about to embark upon, I would never have heard him. So I make this passionate plea to you. You who seem to believe that there is no way out, no one person who will come to your aid, hold your hand, see you through, stand by your side, give you a shoulder to cry on, listen when you're down, celebrate with you when all is well be in the mist or just be quiet and let you know that there's just where you want them to be when you need assurance. I have a savior. He wants to be yours too. Well, hello people. This is Johanna Bright and I am your host for Poetry Song BFD, Battle for Dominance. It's a little late in the evening, but I just wanted to get this Wednesday night in. You know, as a working girl, and I'm going to call myself a girl, although I prefer being called as a working woman, my day is filled with so many things to do, and I just want to check off my to-do list. And so tonight, my to-do list is about women. And I'm thinking, y'all are going, hmm, she talk about women a lot. But guess what? Nobody's listening. So tonight we are talking about body shaming, sexual harassment, rape and allegations, the abusers, the accusers, and maybe she's not a supermodel or a super celebrity. That's right. This is Poetry Song BFD Battle for Dominance, and I am your host, Johanna Bright, or you can just call me Joe Bright. Google me. I am at mamayaya.wixsite.com forward slash website. That's right. On there, you can hear this broadcast, the past broadcast, read my poetry, watch my videos, and find out just what it is that I am all about. So what's going on tonight? You know, I've been following this tirade of men who have sexually abused women let's just say it, in the workplace. And it's not unusual. It's not uncommon. Women have this happen to them on a very regular basis when they're at work. And as a man, I'm sure you 
really do understand that we find it very offensive when you make um how can I say this and just be still me? I ain't no me. There's no way to do it. Okay, so guys tend to come up to you when nobody else is around and say things to you that is just absolutely rude. Hey, baby, how you doing? Oh, are you married? You look really good tonight. Knowing full damn well, you a grown woman with a man who just left you. He left your side and that person pulled up and said, (laughs) how you doing, baby? Mr. Slick Dick slick rick call them whatever you want but that's exactly what it is so tonight we're talking about all those things first up body shaming now let's just be really clear about this i have this story to tell about body shaming that i know happened and some stories that i have heard happen and for women our problem has always been my side, his side, and the truth. Because that's the way the law is. In legalities, you have to just try to make yourself be heard. Women, we have been trying to be heard by the legal system, lawyers, judges, people who not only create the law, but exact the law, right? So you, it's a long story. Let's just get to it. That's all I got to say. So here's a story, right? A young woman, and this is a recent story that happened in the past year. She and her friend go to a party. She's a little older than everyone else. It's a college frat party. She goes there. She gets a little drunk. She tells her girlfriend, I'm going to walk home because I just don't feel like I need to be here right now. And this guy who she's been talking to all night long says, let me walk you home. And because she's inebriated, she goes, sure, why not? He seemed like a nice guy the entire time that she was at the party. Lo and behold, they come up to a block and and at the alley, she kind of passes out because she's drunk more than she realized. And he rapes her. A lot of people know this story. As you know, I don't give name, places, or addresses because I don't need to give that kind of pub. But he rapes her. And while he is raping her in her unconscious state, two young men roll up on him. They see him. They stop him. He gets arrested. He gets a lawyer because he's come from a privileged society, right? He goes to the courts. His his case is brought before a judge. And he doesn't get the time that he deserves. She wakes up in the morning in the alley, her underwear around her, you know what, grass and stuff all in her. Not only has he raped her, he sodomized her before these young men showed up to stop him from doing what he was doing. And he gets three months in jail. See, here's the thing. Women, we have been felt to feel less than ourselves for thousands thousands of years men have mistreated and abused women we have been made to feel like we have to be let me just restate that we have been relegated to taking care of the house and the kids and if we got time a job And if we got time, all the finances and the in and out of work is of the home. Well, men, what are you doing? Hmm. That was back then. Today, men are trying to get into that liberal progressive attitude. But the reality is many, quite frequently, very many men do not have that attitude of being progressive, being liberal, saying that, Marriage and any other kind of a relationship is 100, 100, not 50, 50. Not I get a job and you stay home. But we both have to put in and do our best effort all the time to make sure that we have a healthy lifestyle. So here's the thing. And let's just be really clear. That's what women have had to deal with for thousands of years. And we still aren't really being heard. 
We we really are. Think about this. Last year's 360 Women's March. Did, oh, it's the biggest march in the entire world that the world has ever known. But what kind of changes have been done because of that march? I'm going to come back to you later, right? But right now, I want you to listen to this. It's called I Am Affected. I'm Johanna Bright. This is Poetry Song BFD, Battle for Dominance. And I'll be right back. I am affected by your smile. Witty and thoughtful, deceiving and beguiling, amorous and suspicious. Your impressive giving nature, that is you. I am affected by your posture. Sitting up straight, back pressed firmly against the cushion, eyes forward, listening intently, hanging on my every word, poised for the confrontation destined to come. I am affected by your thoughts, summations and suppositions wound tightly together by a single strand of perception, by your tombs on your shelves, stacked neatly, read thoroughly. I am affected by your perceptions, the way you process information and extricate simplistic meaning from an enigma that is merely life. I am deeply affected by you, what you are, what you will be, what you have become. That's right. What you will be, what you are, and what you have become. I love that. Okay, so that kind of brought me down a little bit because, you know, I, I felt like I was on um, a kind of a rant. And I don't want to rant. I, I want to be as succinct as possible when I talk about the things that matter. And right now, being a woman and women being who we are, that is something that matters. And I was talking about how women have been abused for thousands of years. And I don't need to go back too far in history to show that. When we think about today, the sexual harassment and the rape allegations that have gone on. And I can go back just a couple of years and I can do Bill Cosby. And today I can do Harvey Weinstein. But all the women involved have made it absolutely impossible for women who have suffered body shaming, sexual harassment, rape, molestation, kidnapping, the accusers calling out the abusers. They make it hard for us. I mean, it, that's just what life is, right? It is what it is. Um. So here we go. All right, so moving on to body shaming. And you, you would think, oh, body shaming only happens with men doing that. Women, we tear each other up. We tear each other down. We rip each other a new hole. A third one. Is there a third? A fourth one. Because <laughs> y'all don't think about that, do you? A fourth one. Yeah. Because we have our labia, our vagina, because it's my vagina, right? We have our urethra, right? And then they tear us a new one, the shameful one. Because somebody walked out and didn't look the way they were supposed to look when we walked out looking fabulous. And we walk into somebody who just decided, you know what, I'm just going to be me today. Women shame each other. But more importantly, and here's my point, men shame us and our bodies and women buy into it. It's so psychological. I was speaking to Dr. Gerald Cook, um, who is going to be the new show host on Urban Broadcast Media, uh, UBM Radio Live, um, coming, I think it's November 12th. And I am the new social media manager for Urban Broadcast Media, uh, UBM Radio Live on everywhere. And he was telling me about... Um, a person who decided to have augmentation done to her body. Uh, the problem is we women do not seem to understand that um, we have fallen into the narrative that men have put out there of how we need to look in order to feel accepted by them. 
And see, it doesn't matter what you look like as long as you love yourself. Don't look in the mirror tomorrow morning when you wake up. And I surely hope that you do look into the mirror when you wake up tomorrow morning because that's very important to see yourself. Um, when I was younger, far before I became the age that I am now, I ducked. I'm serious. I ducked. When I got up in the morning, I went in the bathroom and the mirror was right there. I ducked. I hid myself from my face because I didn't want to see my hair. I didn't want to see my face. And the reality is, as I got older, that's who I am. When I wake up in the morning and I look in the mirror, whether she got, you know, sleep in her ass, you know, that indentation from sleeping on the same side <laughs> all night long that's good sleep don't play with that you know and you got these these marks in your face you know maybe you got some hair growing out of your up from your upper lip or your lower lip or whatever you know the the makeup didn't come off so you got an eyelash flying this way because you wear false eyelashes your your weave is all over the place so maybe your natural hair is doing all the natural things that hair does but look at yourself in the mirror and say, hey, girl, how you doing? We had a great night. Seriously, I knew an old white woman who told me once, fake it till you make it. And that's one of those times. You don't have to fake your love for yourself for very long. Because eventually, after day three, you're going to wake up in the mirror and say, hey, girl, it's time to hit the ground running and screw anybody that thinks you ain't doing it right. Because guess what? They ain't paying your bills, buying your groceries, or making you feel better for yourself. You're the only one doing it. So that's what that's all about. Body shaming, let's get rid of that. Speak up, speak out, and stand for something when you see it happening to another woman. When you see a man doing it, when you see another man, a woman doing it, when, when you find yourself doing it, stop it, squash it. That's the only way anything can ever end stand up and stand out and you know that's the thing we need to make sure that we understand a lot of this stuff has gone on in our country today because people have been too afraid to stand up and stand strong and stand tall for what is right all right so um let me give you something sweet to listen to this is called love song he played the most romantic songs my ears ever heard I mean, they stirred in me emotions I didn't know I had. Or maybe I just hadn't felt them in a long while. Every word of every song resonated in me an emotion that drew me closer to him. And I just knew that by the time he played that final crescendo of his love's melody, that all he would have to do is rise from his seat, hold out his hand to mine, and draw me close to him, where all I had to do was inhale his scent. And it wouldn't matter if it was brutal or cool water. By the time he plays that final love song, I would be his. The melodies of love and affection, the never-ending choruses of how much his desire for me is only overshadowed by how much he admired how I handled myself, my life. How I was the only woman who made him want to be a better man, not just for himself, but for me too, and all that I am. And that one phrase moved me to my soul. The rhythms of the music make my body sway back and forth and side to side. And if I let myself go, I can just feel him at the very edges of my body, using his fingers to skim and manipulate the peripheral of my skin and the trim and the rim of my villi. <laughs> I start to know as my imagination moves closer to the reality of us, what love will be like with him. His music sends me down a rabbit trail of romance and I can see what love will be with him and me and the music and then the songs are over. My eyes are open and I'm just playing solitaire and the DJ is moving to the commercial break. Don't you want to be impressed? I want to be impressed. When you take a look at the day, at the end of the day, after you turn off the lights, just before you close your eyes, just before you scoot down underneath the sheets and find that perfect spot for your head and your pillow, don't you want to be impressed? I want to be impressed. When you step out on faith and take that leap into the unknown, 
when you know that rejection is far more likely than acceptance. I mean, after you put yourself on a tightrope of hope and you just have a string of support, but you persevere in the face of adversity, don't you want to be impressed? I want to be impressed. When the right thing to do was not the popular thing to do. When you want to do the popular thing, but it's not the wrong thing. I mean, it's the wrong thing, but it's not the wrong thing. And you know it's the wrong thing, but it's the thing that will make you popular. Don't you want to be impressed? I want to be impressed. When you wake up tomorrow and yesterday wasn't as bad as you thought it was and that if you can make it through today doing what you're supposed to do, only doing it better than yesterday because you weren't too sure of yesterday, but today is looking pretty good. And if you can get through today after yesterday, tomorrow will be a breeze. Don't you want to be impressed? I know I want to be impressed. Yeah. I have to admit that I I kind of am impressed by that one because every morning we all want to be impressed. I mean, you want to, you really want to impress yourself so that when others look at you, they are impressed. And then isn't that what that's all about? So going down the list, let's talk about some sexual harassment. We get that all the time, don't we, ladies? We think a guy is flirting with us. But really, he's harassing us. So when does sexual harassment become, when does flirting become sexual harassment? It may happen right away. Sexual harassment is very subtle. And I have a lot of experience in it, um, unfortunately. But the reality is, um, women suffer from sexual harassment on the job, at home, and the and, and in their social life all the time we can't get away from it it doesn't matter what you look like it doesn't matter you can have long hair short hair curly hair thick hair you can have big beautiful brown eyes blue eyes gray eyes you can have puffy lips thin lips you can have high cheekbones low cheekbones no cheekbones you hear me you can have an a cup to a triple h cup Because men all have their proclivities of what they like. And when they see what they like, if they have rejected their upbringing, they are going to sexually harass you. I got a story. When I was about, I want to say I was 24 years old. I was working in an insurance company and this guy who I usually just said hi and goodbye to because it was an open area kind of thing. Nobody had cubicles at the time. And me and my girlfriend were coming back from lunch and he was coming up the hallway and we were coming around from the elevator. And I was like, oh, there's Mike. I didn't like him, but you know, being cordial, I said hello. And he stopped like right in an inch from my nose. I said, excuse me, I'm trying to get back. And he was like, he put his hands on me. I said, I'm trying to get by. Let me go. And my girlfriend was standing right there. She didn't say anything. He put his hands on me. He gripped me. I fought him. For some reason, the carpet was wet. This is my memory. The carpet was wet. I slipped. I went up against the wall. He got in my face. And he was like, how come you treating me like this? And I said, what do you mean? I just said hi and goodbye to you. I don't really know you. We don't even talk to each other. And he he squeezed my arms very badly. I got really shook up. And then he just stopped because he realized where we were. Because we were around the corner from the open area where the office desks and everybody else were. During lunch hour, people were coming and going. And he stopped. I had to pull myself together in the bathroom. And then afterwards, when my girlfriend was standing there shocked to shit. I said, you know what? I'm not going to have this. And I went to my manager who was a woman and I told her what happened. It was probably the most courageous thing I had ever done, especially since I had been accosted and abused in my young, in that stage of my life. I was like 23, 24 years old at the time. 
He was put on probation and made to apologize to me and was told not to come near me at all, ever. And we didn't see, we saw each other all the time because we worked in the same workplace. And about three months down the line, he saw me on the other side of the L and he waved to me and I didn't look at him. But then I looked back at him and I waved back. The next day he came up to me and he apologized for his behavior because he said he had no business putting his hands on me. He considered me a friend and he was having a bad day and he just felt bad about it. And I forgave him and life moved on. It doesn't happen all the time, but that's really the way it should happen. People are human. We're all human. No matter what our race, creed, or nationality. But women are, these things happen to them all the time. And then let's talk about rape and allegations real quick. Because I don't really have any real stories about that. But the reality is women have to deal with rape and the allegations of rape all the time. And and current history proves it out all the time. The men who have been accused, Bill Cosby, Harry Weinstein pick a man who has a lot of power and what happens he gets acquitted he goes through the court cases so much time is spent in and out of court with their lawyers so much money is spent that we just forget about them we don't care anymore we're sick and tired of it media just decides that they're going to move on to the next story and we never find out what happens to them does anybody even think about what happened to bill cosby He's still going to court. Harry Weinstein says it's a it's an addiction. Hollywood has stood up behind him and said, oh, the poor guy. You know, I'm just going to have to make this an illicit thing. Fuck him. And all of them. All men do it. Women have had to put up with this crap for way too long. Yeah, I said crap. <laughs> because there's a difference between cursing and profanity. But the reality is that's what happens. That's what happens. We have to keep putting up with this shit because men have, have they have de- defamed our bodies for their own gratification. And they think nothing about it. And women, we are, it has happened to us for so very long. We just brush it away because we, we know that if we make too big of a fuss, nobody's going to pay attention to us. But we all have to stand together and tell each other, you know what? I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to stand with you. Even if you don't want to stand with me. Don't make decisions based on whether or not somebody's going to stand with you. Stand with your sister, the female of the species. Because there's really only two species on this planet. Male and female. And we're on the, we're on the top tier. Male and female. They've chopped it up and made it look complicated, but it's not complicated. It's male and female. And you can debate the rest of it if you want to, but it's only two, male and female. And they hold all the cards. So I'm going to let you listen to this. It's called, Was It Really Going All? Was It Really All Going So Well? Was It Really Going All So Well? You were finally doing all those things that you thought you wanted to do. The mistress or master of your destiny. No one, I mean no one had control over your day. It was planned out to your specifications, desires, goals. Nothing happened that you didn't know about in your life. You made your own schedule, set, planned, and wrote the script of your day. Then you got sucker punched into thinking that you had a place in this world. You foolhardily believed that this was a race you could win and that you had a dog in this fight. You had two proverbial cents to put in and make a difference. (laughs) You weren't alone. Even though you completely forgot that you didn't want anything to do with the fight because the fight, the battle, the war wasn't for people like you. People who believed that if you play fair, play your cards right, don't cheat, be honest, never malign another person, step on someone else's throat to get ahead, or push aside the ideas, conceptions, and hard work of another to get ahead, that if you respect the boundaries of another, that you would do well. But that's not true. This world isn't for you to conquer or to claim. It already has its victors here. And they aren't about to give up the throne without a fight. 
They've claimed what they know are the best parts of this world, and they are not about to relinquish that power to you or me or anyone else. They have been grooming and molding and shaping their children for decades so they can hand that power and wealth over to them. And if I or you want a piece of that power or wealth, don't think it's going to be a fair fight. Because the powers that be have trained their heirs on how to wield, manipulate, and lord over others that power and wealth. So that one day all that power, wealth, that big dog in the fight can be theirs. And their children have been fighting amongst themselves for all that power, all that wealth. Their servants, even the lowest of their ranks, have been salivating about that power, that wealth. Their servants, the undeserved privileged who open and lock their doors and stand behind them in public looking out for their well-being. Their servants who send their hard-earned money to their families, open 401ks and money market accounts so they can send their children to schools where the tuition is higher than your yearly salary. Their servants who make sure their friends get the best jobs, even at the lowest levels, because they hear privileged conversations. And their friends act like they're privileged because they were the first to get a job when no one else could. And they all become beholden to the privileged few, unaware that they're being used and stepped on. They don't really see that they're no better off than those of us who don't know the privileged few. They just get to hang around them sometimes. They don't have a dog in the fight either. The rest who have been used and misused, who have been put out and stepped on, made to feel less than themselves. Especially after we've all spent our entire lives reminding ourselves daily that we are somebody. Somebody with worth. Somebody with intelligence and sophistication. Somebody with the ability to stand up for ourselves and to stand with others for a righteous cause. We just want a change of power. To hands we think we can trust, but sometimes it's the same set of hands with a different label. And the same people in power still manage to make you feel like if you just hang in there, one day you too can have a dog in this fight, if you want to. Well now, there we go. Do you want a dog in the fight? Or whether you want a dog in the fight or not, guess what? You got one. I'm Johanna Bright. This is Poetry Song BFD Battle for Dominance, and I am your host. And tonight, I just got a whole list of shit I want to talk about. Right now, I am up to raping allegations and the abusers, you know, and the accusers. So let's just wrap it all up. <clears throat> okay, so raping allegations and the abusers really come down to everyday women because not, I'm not talking about celebrities although they are grouped in that they can be considered everyday women because they get up every day and they have to uh, get themselves ready for what they know will be a day filled with having to deal with the powers that be and the upper tier is filled with a lot of men and so they have to prepare themselves for what they know will be a battle to the finish in order to get what they need to get done. So, and these women, um, when I talk about the top tier, are celebrities, socialites who have become celebrities. And I'm not giving anybody any pub because they're not paying me no money to put their name out there. But you all know who you are. I mentioned the men because as a matter of recourse, those are the faces that you can go to on the internet, look them up, and you will find the women. And so what I'm getting to is these women who are socialites who have become celebrities, actresses who have become celebrities. And what have they done? Well, first of all, and not all of them, they have settled out of court. They have signed non-disclosure agreements. They've taken monetary settlements. And they've said that they will not say anything. Or they have sat in silence for however long it has taken. And by doing that, they have progressed forward. Progressed forward. That's a conundrum. They have forwarded their themselves in the industries in which they want to be um, successful in. So let's take these two prominent figures, 
Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cosby and you know we have women who have signed non-disclosure agreements who have taken monetary settlements and then we have one strong willed woman who has said enough of this shit and let me just add this to my list of men Donald Trump Donald Trump the elected president of the United States is still in court on allegations of molestation and or rape and they have subpoenaed him to give documents from his campaign this person that has subpoenaed him <clears throat> through the courts subpoenaed originally that they do not destroy those documents because they are part of her case and she's very serious and I stand with her because but there are women who have done this foolishly foolishly but they've said well you know what I'm not going to get anything out of this I can scream at the top of my lungs about what this man did to me and he's so strong and so powerful and he has so much pull in the industry that he's in nobody's going to pay attention to him and what he's done to me they're going to say she should have known she shouldn't have been up there she shouldn't have walked in that room by herself she shouldn't have did this and she shouldn't have did that what the hell Men walk into meetings with each other on a regular basis, day in, day out, moment after moment, shaking their hands, making deals, and neither one of them are afraid of what will happen to them while they're in the room alone with that other man. Some men, maybe. I ain't going to put that as an absolute. But women, we have to think about that all the time. We're about to walk into a room with a man who is very powerful, and the possibility exists that he might take advantage of me. And so we are always on our guard. And we have been taught to be on our guard from the day we were old enough to understand that we were in women before our menstrual cycle began. And when our menstrual cycle began, when we were wearing bras because we had breasts, our mothers taught us how to behave. And many of us have rejected that and said, you know what? I'm just going to do what I want to do. And that's fine if you're going to do what you want to do. But remember, you got to be strong. You can't outfight a man. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. If that there's a man who wants to take advantage of you and put his hands on you, he's going to do it. Because you're going to be caught unawares. You see, it doesn't matter if he uses his voice or his hands. You're still going to be caught unawares. So we need to stand up for each other. Stand with each other. Stand with each other. Stand strong and stand proud. Because that's who we have to be with each other. Listen to this. And when I come back, we're going to be on my last bit. And I'm going to close it out. I'm Johanna Bright. This is Poetry Song, BFD. Battle for Dominance. You can find all of this and more at mamayaya.wixsite.com forward slash website. That's M O M M A Y A Y A dot Wixsite, W I X S I T E dot com slash website. Listen to this. It's called At Some Point. I'm at a point where I question my ability to read people. Yeah, I know I said I could, but people change. The ones that come near seem like the ones I would trust. The ones who said they had my back, I wouldn't trust them as far as I could throw them. I'm at a point where I question my ability to discern the right from the wrong. And before, yeah, it was easy because we were young. Everyone had the same ideals. We were all in the same fight, had the same battles and strategies. The outcome was what we all wanted. But now the war is different. It's the same war with the same soldiers fighting on the same front. And some have the same tattered uniforms. And they chant the same battle cry. And I attend the same rallies with the same people. But it's different now. It's too many skirmishes. Too many deaths. Too many walking wounded. Who remember when we stood up for them in the fray. In the heat of the battle. When all seemed lost. And they needed someone to reach out and pulled them out of the ditch and covered them with their bodies while the bullets flew overhead and all they knew was there was noise and somehow it's not affecting them because someone covered them with their blood 
and they emerged victorious and they're different now. And I'm different now. But the war rages on and the battles are held on the field of death and the bodies pile up in numbers staggering, sublime. And we stop counting them because we have to soldier on until the war is won. We're all different now. There are times when I want to check out. And it seems like there's no end to the war. There are no more victories. The soldiers are tired, wearied, and worn. The bullets still fly. The death toll still rises. Not as much as you would think anymore. And the enemy, he doesn't care. And I don't know who he is anymore. So, this is what right feels like. It doesn't feel like what you would have thought. I don't have more friends than before. People aren't hitting me up for advice everywhere I go. I haven't been invited to all the best functions. In fact, it's just the opposite. I thought I'd be feeling empowered and full of strength and determination. You know, the will to soldier on, take a stand. Uh Uh-uh. Just the opposite. Every day, I have to find the strength to get up and face the day. Question my motives behind everything. Stand up for truth, dignity, justice, oppression. Just doing the right thing. I have to check myself first. Not be a hypocrite. Remember that. I think that's a poignant um, note to end on. For everybody, not just women. My son is a feminist. He's not gay. If people think that being a feminist means that a man has to be gay, he's not gay. I have a son that's gay, but that's not the son that I'm talking about. And he's a feminist also. As a matter of fact, my husband and all my sons are feminists. And what does that mean? They stand up for the rights of women. They do not believe in no shape, form, or fashion that women should be mistreated, but that they should be treated as equal, seen as human beings, and given the respect that men give each other. I'm Johanna Bright. This is Poetry Song, BFD, Battle for Dominance. And you can hear this broadcast and all of my others on my website, mamayaya.wixsite.com slash website. That's M-O-M-M-A-Y-A-Y-A dot W-I-X-S-I-T-E slash W-E-B-S-I-T-E. Like, share, and subscribe to my website. And you will get notified every time I put something out. Well, it's just basically about once a week because I'm a busy woman. I got things to do. And uh, y'all have a great night. I got a whole lot of other stuff to do. But I wanted to share my opinion with you. Like, comment, and share. When I'm on next time, why don't y'all take a little time and say something in my chat box because it's always live on Spreaker.com and I'm always ready to take on whatever you got to throw at me. You know why? Girl power. (laughs) Follow me, love, like, share, and subscribe and enjoy the journey with me. I am changing the world, people, one line at a time. Make it your mantra.